everyone, I am Desiree Clivia and for today's video, our group will be discussing about the financial institutions for the masses. So for today's topic outline, I will be discussing about the role of financial institutions in socioeconomic development, the role of credit, the allocation of credit, the economic growth with and without inflation, and lastly is the development of income and wealth. First is the role of financial institutions in socioeconomic development. Financial institutions play an important role in every economy. They are regulated by a central government organization for banking and non-banking financial institutions. These institutions help in bridging the gap between idle savings and investments and its borrowers from net savers to net borrowers. For example, financial institutions like the central bank help in regulating the money supply in the economy. They do it to maintain stability and control inflation. Financial institutions like commercial banks help their customers by providing savings and deposit services. Commercial banks also extend several kinds of loans like personal loans, education loans, mortgage, or home loans to their customers. Financial institutions like insurance companies help to mobilize savings and investments in productive activities. Financial institutions help in capital formation, increase in the capital stock like the plant, machinery, tools and equipment, buildings, means of transports and communication, etc. Financial institutions, through their various kind of investment plans, help the individual in planning their retirements. And lastly is financial institutions help small and medium-scale enterprises set up themselves in their initial days of business. So, yan yung mga example ng mga institutions. Next is the allocation, the rule of credit. The rule of credit allows in individuals and organizations to purchase items without having to make an immediate payment in cash. Banks use this system of credit to make loans. Next is the allocation of credit. According to Mather and Marceline 2014, credit allocation is a process of how a bank divides its financial resources and other sources of credit to different processes, borrowers, and projects. Overall, it is managed goal to optimize credit allocation so that it generates as much wealth as possible for its shareholders. Next naman is yung economic growth with and without inflation. Inflation measures how much more expensive a set of goods and services has become over a certain period, usually a year. Inflation is the rate of increase in prices over a year given period of time. Inflation is typically, typically a broad measure such as the overall increase in prices or the increase in the cost of living in a country but it can also be more narrowly calculated for certain goods such as foods or for services such as a haircut, for example. Whatever the context, inflation represents how much more expensive the relevant set of goods and or services has become over a certain period, most commonly a year. So, naman, ta itakal naman natin yung pagkakaiba ng with and without inflation. With inflation, an increase in the inflation rate would mean you'll have to spend more for the same goods that you used to purchase at a lower cost. For some, this may mean a lower standard of living and letting go of luxurious to afford basic goods. So, naman, itakal naman natin kung ano yung without inflation. Developing economies have the potential to have economic growth while keeping inflation low. Economies like China have been relatively successful in this regard. If they can adopt improved technology and better working practices, then growth will not cause inflation. However, the Chinese growth shows that if it becomes too rapid, leading to a property bubble, then there is an increasing risk of inflation, which may require demand-side policies to limit growth. Developing economies can also make use of various supplies, side policies to help increase productivity, 
and avoid supplies bottlenecks with cause inflation. And last is sometimes final inflation in developing economies is due to external crises such as rapid devaluation or even governments printing money in response to economic shock. Therefore, it is necessary to avoid this potential infl inflationary shock. So, yan yung pagkakaiba ng with and without inflation. Next naman is the development of income and wealth. It is often the case that the higher the income, the higher the investment derived portion tends to be. Because most fortune require long periods to accumulate. The existence of a class of very wealthy persons can result from the ability of those persons to retain their fortunes and pass on to the descendants. So, tignan natin yung pagkakaiba ng income and wealth. Sa income, is a flow of money going to factors of production. Pagdating naman sa wealth, is the current value of a stock of, a stock of assets owned by someone or society as a whole. So, ganyan yung pagkakaiba ng income and wealth. So, yun lamang po. Maraming salamat sa pakikinig at have a nice day.